G'day everyone, recently had a question about whether I could do a video on, on the commonality of capacitor values, so which ones you could stock up on um, more than um, other values that you'd stock up on and um, uh, I was thinking of actually expanding that a bit further so it's going to be a three part series, in this first video we're going to look at capacitor values and resistor values and I'll briefly discuss the types that, you'll be after, that, you, that you should um, look for as well. So this information is um, strictly guitar pedal um, con uh, assembly um, that I'm talking about now, um, not general electronics, obviously if you're doing a power supply or something like that you'd use totally different um, components to what I'm about to show you now. Um, and, um, and then in the second video we'll do something along the lines, I haven't quite thought this out yet, but maybe um, uh, diodes and um, transistors and then in the third we'll look at everything else, um, uh, possibly could look at pots as well, potentiometers and ICs as well, um, which covers a fair bit of ground, pretty much everything that you need as far as the small components go. And of course the big advantage of having a repository like what you see behind me is that um, it makes building pedals much easier if you've got everything on hand, when you run out of a particular component, you just order 20 more of them, chuck them in your parts box, then you have to worry about it for a while. And this is an example of a pedal that um, I'm working on at the moment, um, which is the which is the Mad Bean Nom Nom, which is a Phase 90. Um, as you can see on this list of components, sorry, I'm losing my voice. Um, I've ticked off everything that I've got, and I've left what I haven't got. However, a lot of those parts I actually have, like I have the switch. Um, I actually have the trim pots as well, I just haven't sold them in yet. So the only thing I really need now is the, is the p potentiometer. I've got the ICs, <laughs> uh, I've actually got the transistors and everything as well, I just haven't sold most of those up. So the only thing that I'm missing is the, um, is the potentiometer. So I've got everything on that bill, bill of materials on hand and I can just assemble the effect. So as you can see I've got most of it on there, there's a couple of parts that weren't actually um, that I think Mad Bean's taken, out, taken off or maybe I just haven't sold them up yet. But as you can see, I've got pretty much everything I need. Just makes building pedals so much easier when you've got everything on hand, you just put it together. When you run out of a component, you order another 10 or 100 or however many you need and you chuck them in your parts box and they're there for you for the next pr products to come up. Instead of ordering one 1K resistor, one 10 nanofarad capacitor, it's a pain in the backside. It's better, I, I think, you know, uh, if you're starting to build, you know, turn over pedals, um, it's just much easier to stock up. So let's take a look at some of the common values and we'll go through them and I'll give you my opinion on what is the best values to stock up on and what values are not the best ones to stock up on. And fortunately, some time ago, I actually went to the trouble of going through I think it was about um, 20 or 30 of um, uh, Mad, Bean, Mad Bean Pedals um, projects and just writing down the capacitor values and it came up with this quite interesting list actually there were some values in there I didn't realize were quite as popular as I thought I, I initially thought so you can pause the video here and look at those values and um, decipher um, how, which ones you want to stock up on some of the obvious ones um, uh, that you'd have absolutely no problem using um, in pedals and things are 220 nanofarad, 100 nanofarad, 47 nanofarad is another, <clears throat> another common one, I actually thought it was more common than that, but um, it is used quite a bit. Um, and 22, 10 is another one, and, um, and 1 nanofarad, they're, they're the main popular ones, but you can see on that list, uh, just for like a general ratio um, of what you need. I'd also put 1 microfarad on that as well. Um, um, as far as these list quantities goes, you'd be looking sort of like just to get the ratio um, you're probably looking at maybe 5 or 10 um, would be the popularity I'd say as far as the commonality is, as far as that goes, maybe 5 or 10, um, 1 microfarad. And um, another value that didn't come up on that particular list but is used rarely, um, not too often but sometimes, is 2.2 um, um, microfarad. That's usually in some of the sort of amp simulation type pedals, they, they use um, those in the signal chain to allow all the bass to come through. Um, so yeah, that and there's also 680 um, nano, uh, nanofarad as well, comes up occasionally, again that would be a rare one as well. Again, if we're looking at the list, you're probably looking for the 2.2 microfarad and the um, <clears throat> 680 nanofarad, you'd be looking at sort of like, you know, two or three on that list. They're not used that common, commonly they're quite rare. <clears throat> 
So as far as the type of um, <clears throat> capacitor goes, um, there's mainly there's two main types that you'd use. You'd either use the fil film box type, um, which are just well as the name suggests, they're in a box kind of shape, um, and the, the the lead spacing is five millimeter. Or you could look at um, <clears throat> these um, other film caps. I think they're polyester film. Can't remember exactly, um, but they've got that sort of molded top on them. Um, don't get green caps because they they tend to they tend to vary quite. Um, largely between values and as you get up to these do as well uh, these are Panasonic ECQs and as you can see a 680 nanofarad is much bigger than the one I just showed you they all do they all I should say they all do even box as you can see they're getting bigger um, but the green caps get really big um, when you're hitting the one microfarad uh, sorry when you go over 100 nanofarad even in the smaller range they still end up quite big like twice the height of something like that um, I'm not quite sure why that is. Or three times the height, yeah, even in the even in the lower under under 100 nanofarad. Um, so green caps aren't a very good one to go with, in my opinion. So that gives you a pretty brief sort of rundown on capacitor values. Resistors are a little bit different. Um, they're a little bit trickier because there's just so many values. Um, as you can see on here, if I grab the camera to show you what I've got. This is what I've got on my store currently. I mean, it's always expanding, but as you can see um, from these values, there's 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 loads of them. Got ceramics there. Um, there's there's a lot of values. Um, the, the main ones um, are, tend to be 1k, um, 4.7k, or 5 or 5.1k, 10k, and then it keeps going. So 47k or 51k, 100k, 470k, 510k, one meg. Um, that that they are that they are the the first ones I can think of that are the most common and the ones that you use quite a lot of, 10K and 1K and 100K and 1 meg you use all the time. Um, they're, they're values you can stock up on without fear that you're going to use them. So that, that you're not going to use them. So the type of um, the type of the type of resistor that you'd be looking at um, is a um, a quarter watt film. Just in case you've never seen these before, um, carbon film or, or heard about this. So you're looking at carbon film or metal film um, is what you want. I just thought I should. I just thought I should add that in at the end, just in case you weren't sure on what you were actually stocking up on. So believe it or not, that pretty much covers everything as far as um, the resistors and the capacitors go. Um, that you could safely, um, uh, you, well, you have an idea of what you can what you can stock up on and what are some of the common values. Might as well also look at ceramic while we're talking about capacitors as well. Um, I will leave an electrolytic. I'll leave electrolytic to to another video, uh, the next video. Um, I'll start the next video off with that, just purely because, um, um, yeah, it'll. Uh, this one will go on for too long, basically. Um, but again, with the ceramics, they're the ones that I've got. You can follow. Um, sorry, you can't see that top one there. Um, I'll just zoom in a bit so you can see. They're the ones I've got. Well, you can just check my web story as well. Um, these are the ones I've got that I found were the most common, commonly used. Um, 470 peak farad gets used quite a lot for some reason. 10 peak farad, 100 peak farad, 47 as well. Um, but they don't—you don't use those too often. Um, ceramics, you know, like you probably get maybe one or two each project. Maybe um, they're not really used that often. Sometimes they're not used at all. Um, so that's not really one that you probably need to stock up on as such. But um, um, if you need just the basics, they're the values that I stock. And again, you'd be looking at—I've actually got two going at the moment. I'm actually trying to phase out the. Um, the um, ceramic discs and use the um, multi-layer, um, um, what is it, MLCC, multi-layer ceramic capacitor um, instead. So that's a ceramic disc um, and um, I mean they're fine, you know, everyone uses them, but um, I like the I like the multi, uh, let's just go with the abbreviation, the MLCCs because um, they're quite small um, and, they're, um, and they're the same price as the others as well. Um, and they're pretty well same noise characteristics too. N neither of them are very good um, as far as noise handling goes. Um, but if you want the noise, the, the low noise um, ceramics are quite expensive. Um, so yeah, that's a that's an MLLC. I actually put them ne next to each other so you can see um, what they look like. And they've got the, the MLCCs have a dipped. Um, I guess that the outer casing is dipped as you can see it's shiny. So yeah. You can get the MLCCs as well, which are pretty good. So that's pretty much it as far as 
those go, the resistors and the um, and the film capacitors. Turn the camera around so you can see me. So the next video we'll look at the electrolytics and um, we'll also look at um, diodes as well. There's some, there's some diodes that we use quite often and just show you some of the things that I have stocked on my store. Um, because most of the things I've stocked on my store I've put most, I've put on because they're common, they're commonly used. Um, I'm trying to, I don't have a lot of storage space, so I try and use, um, I try and stock what's common. Um, so, uh, it might give you some ideas anyway, just to give you a rough guide on what you can stock up on. Um, so, that's it for the first part. Um, if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments, I'll see if I can, I'll try, I'll try and help you. Um, and um, I hope it gave you a brief rundown on what, um, what to look for, um, for, the, for, for your capacitors and resistors. See you in the next video. <clears throat>